In this video, we're going to implement the fetch by ID and delete operations in our service layer, and we're going to see how we can implement them in our DAO layer by making use of the hash map that we now know about. We'll start with a few prerequisites. First of all, I have run our unit test that we created earlier because we are making a change to our service layer, which is where we created those unit tests, and we see all of those unit tests pass. Now let's take a look at our controller and remember the endpoints that we have. We have essentially a fetch all endpoint, which we've already implemented. We have a post endpoint, which creates a new specimen, and we've implemented that as well. Now both of these are just attaching to the slash specimen endpoint, none are specifying an ID. Fetch specimen by ID, on the other hand, and delete specimen both require an ID. So we take a look at our specimen service stub and we see that we have our save operation, which is simply pushing the operation down to the DAO layer. Fetch all doing the same thing. Fetch by ID is handling this locally and we want to change that. And then we also want to make a delete option. So let's start with fetch by ID and we'll simply create a call to a few methods that don't exist yet in our specimen DAO, but that's okay. This will help us think about how to create them. So specimen DAO and we'll say fetch and then we'll simply pass in that ID. Note that that doesn't exist, so we Alt Enter, and we say Create Method in our interface. Yep, that looks good. Go ahead and choose Enter, and Save. And now back to our stub, and Fetch by ID, we want that to return a specimen, so let's say Specimen Found Specimen equals Specimen DAO dot Fetch by ID, and then simply return found specimen. Now it's giving me a red line here and I think that's because I probably should have set up this equation before I created the, the new method in our interface iSpecimenDAO because it created with a void return type and I actually want it to return a specimen. Uh, so there we go. Now let's go back to our stub and let's go ahead and implement a delete endpoint as well. So public uh, void delete and then we'll say and ID for that as well. And for this, we'll simply say specimen DAO dot delete, and we'll pass in that ID. Let's have this throw an exception in case it has a problem deleting. Uh, actually, it should be throws. We notice that this is redlining because once again, we've created a, or we're calling a method that does not yet exist. But we know that IntelliJ can help us out with an alt enter and create method in our interface. So here we have our delete method and we have our fetch method, but take a look, IntelliJ is telling us that something might be wrong. So this is our interface. We click and we see that our interface is being implemented by a class called specimen DAO stub. And remember that if we have a class that implements an interface, it's under contract to provide an implementation for every method in that interface. And because we've added two new methods to this interface, we now have to add those same two methods to our stub. So let's go ahead and implement both methods. Fetch by ID and delete are both asking us to grab an item from this collection by a unique identifier. Right now, we're storing everything in this collection in an array list, and we know if we have to find a specific item in that array list, we might have to shake hands with every item in that array list. We know, however, if we need to access a specific item, a hash map or a hash set is a bit better, especially among big collections, because the add, remove, contains, and size operations are constant or O to the 1. So let's change all specimens from a list to a hash map. Now where an array list or a list takes only one generic identifier, which is the object that it's storing, a hash map is going to take two, one to represent the key and the other to represent the value. So the key is the unique identifier that we're going to generate a hash code on to determine where it lives in this hash map. For that, we're going to use the specimen ID because that should be unique, and that's an integer. So I'll say integer comma specimen. Then on the right side, an array list is not a hash map, so we're going to need to say hash map on the right side as well. As a matter of fact, we could just use the interface type as the variable if we want. We could use map like so. Uh, that works because hash map is a class that implements the map interface. Now, we'll go ahead and take the generics out of that. We'll simply inherit it from the left side and we're all good. Now let's take a look at our existing methods and see what needs to change. 
First of all, we have the save method, and when we were dealing with an array list, all we needed to do is say add, and it would simply add it to the end of the array list. Now that we're dealing with the hash map, we use the put operation. But put requires two arguments. Number one, a key. Where does this go? Number two, a value. In other words, here's the object we want to associate with that key. The key is going to be easy because we can simply say specimen.getSpecimenID. Now, this returns a string, and remember that our key is going to be an integer, so we can simply do a little bit of parsing here to make it an integer. So we'll say integer uh, specimen ID equals integer dot parse int, just like so. In hindsight, I should probably just go ahead and make that specimen ID an int on the specimen DTO. I made it a string in case we wanted to put some hexadecimal in there, but yeah, we might go back and refactor that later. Either way, we now have a specimen ID as an integer, and we can now finish up our line 19 and say specimen ID, comma, specimen, just like so. And now this specimen is associated with this specimen ID in this collection we've made called all specimens. Now, the save operation looks great. Let's take a look at the fetch all. For the fetch all, it's currently expecting that we are going to return a list. And all specimens, while it used to be a list, is now a map. These two types are incompatible. So we'll need to do a bit of math here as well. Let's say all specimens dot values. Now this is going to return to us just the values, just a collection of the values. The tricky part is it is returning it as a type collection, which is a bit more general than the specific type list. So we need to do a little bit of magic here. Let's say list specimen return specimens equals new array list all specimens dot values. So what we're doing is we're taking all the values as a collection, we're creating a new array list, and we're simply storing it in a temporary variable called return specimens. And essentially line 25 is how we can take the values of a hash map and convert it to a list. Now we simply return, return specimens, and this method is good. Now we can move on to the two new methods that we've created, which are going to be incredibly simple. The fetch method. So we're fetching by an ID. Well, guess what? To fetch by an ID, we simply say return all specimens dot get, and then we pass in that ID. Done. Delete. Very similar. We're simply going to say all specimens dot remove, and we're going to pass in the key, and we're done. And with that, our DAO is now complete, and it has been converted to a hash map. Now, this is just our stub, so in a future lecture series, we can see how to persist this to a database, but this at least gives us enough to start building out our service layer. This is where unit testing is nice since we've made some changes to the service layer. So I paused the video for a moment, ran my unit test, I found that two passed and one failed. But this is actually a flaw with the unit test that I want to fix, and I will fix. I'm going to pause the video and fix it. Remember, one of our tests just said arbitrarily the specimen with ID 83 should be a red bud. The trick is now we're being a bit more dynamic, where before we simply hard-coded in if I see 83 return a red bud. So what I'm going to do after I pause the video is say when specimen 83 added is red bud. I add one more when clause to this. Uh, create the method. And here's what our new method looks like. I simply create a new specimen object. I populate the ID with 83 and the description with Eastern Redbud. Now remember, this unit test is only testing our service layer, and a lot of the heavy lifting is on our DAO. And we had something very similar to this hard-coded into our service layer previously that I took away when I added the hash map to our DAO. So what I did is I simply added a new Mockito line to say, okay, when the service layer reaches down to the DAO and it looks for number 83, then return this redbud object that I've created here. You notice the description has the word Eastern Redbud in it. And if we take a look at the requirements for the test, it simply validates that the description has Eastern Redbud in it. So I made this change. I reran the test. And if you take a look over here to the left, all of the tests have passed. Now that we've validated the service layer against our new DAO, let's go ahead and call these methods from our controller. Now, if we take a look at our iSpecimen service, all of the methods need to be in here because to our controller, it simply has a reference to iSpecimen service. 
If we take a look at iSpecimen service, we notice that it does not have the delete method that we have put into the specimen service stub class, which implements iSpecimen service. Luckily, this is a very easy fix. We simply right click, say refactor, and then we say pull members up. And what that means is put me into a super class or super interface, and notice that it already has figured out, well, yep, delete is what we want to pull up. So we're going to choose refactor. It gives us the override annotation to indicate that this is overriding a method from somewhere else. We look at specimen service and we see that we now have delete and we also have fetch by ID. So let's go to our controller. And the delete mapping is going to be straightforward. Remember again, we already have our variable specimen service, which will contain, in this case, an object of type specimen service stub. So we simply say specimen service dot delete and we pass it in the ID. Now once again we have the setup as a string where this is expecting an int. I will probably go back and refactor that to be an int, but in the meantime let's just say integer.parse int and pass in the ID so we can convert that string to an int. Now look at the next part. You might say, oh I hate this, oh this is so annoying. It says unhandled exception java lang exception. Actually, this is really handy now that we know what status codes are. So I'm going to choose Alt Enter and I'm going to say surround with try catch. Now remember, if everything goes well in the try, it will skip the catch part. So that means I can say return HTTP status OK. On the other hand, if there was an exception, that means something went wrong. And in that case, I can return a different HTTP status. We'll go with internal server error on this one. There, we could take a look and get a bit more specific, but that'll work for us. Nonetheless, you see that only one of these two will get returned. If everything goes well, these two lines execute, and we're done. If something fails on this line, this line never executes. We come down to the catch part, and we say there was an internal server error. And we know because we're using RESTful services, whoever's calling us should understand what these error codes mean, and then should be able to take some kind of behavior around that. Okay, let's go to the get mapping with ID. Right now it's just returning a response entity with HTTP status dot OK. And we know we can take a shortcut like we did above on fetch all specimens and just use the response body annotation to say, take whatever the return type is here, marshal it to JSON, send that back. And that would work for us, but response entity gives us a bit more flexibility because we can specify our status codes here we can specify other headers and the like. So let me go ahead and do this one a little bit longer way than we did up above, but this longer way is going to end up being a bit more flexible as well. Number one, let's get the specimen and that's the easy part. Specimen service dot fetch by ID and we simply pass in that ID. Now we need, we know we need to convert the ID from sprint string to int. So I'll say integer dot parse int and we'll simply pass in that ID that we're receiving as a parameter variable up here. Once again, I probably should go back refactor that and make that just an int all throughout, but right now we'll keep that as string parsing to an int. So that will return to us a specimen. So we'll say specimen found specimen equals specimen service dot fetch by ID. Let's go ahead and pass that specimen in our response entity. Next thing we'll need to do is create the headers to say that this is going to be JSON content. So HTTP headers, headers equals new HTTP headers, and then headers dot set content type, and we simply pass in media type, application JSON. And now let's pass those headers into our response entity. So effectively, we have something very similar here on the fetch by ID as we have up above, just a bit more control around the headers and the response code. Let's go ahead and start things up. Now with it running, let's do a manual integration test with Postman. So first of all, I'm going to create a specimen with plant ID 85 bit specimen ID 1004 by using my post endpoint. I hit send, we get a response looking good. Let's make one more. This time it's going to be plant ID 84 with specimen specimen ID 1003 and send and all looks good. Now let's try a couple of gets. So let's try the get endpoint with specimen that does not specify an ID therefore it will return all specimens to us. And take a look we have specimen ID 1003 and specimen ID 1004 both of the specimens that we just created with our post endpoint. 
Now let's use one that accepts an ID and let's get back only the specimen with ID 1003. Send here and sure enough you see we get back the specimen with only 1003. Now let's change that HTTP action to delete and let's say that we want to delete the specimen with ID 1003. So we send we get back a 200 OK, which indicates that it deleted successfully. So now let's change our endpoint back to the get action, and let's take off the ID and just go to the specimen endpoint, which would show us all of our specimens. What I'm anticipating now is we're down to one specimen since we just removed the specimen with ID 1003. I hit send, and sure enough, you notice we only have one specimen because the 1003 specimen had been removed. If I want to try that one more time, let's go ahead and go to the post endpoint and add that 1003 back. And then let's change this to our get endpoint and confirm that now we do have two specimens, 1003 and 1004. So with that, we've taken a look at how to implement a hash map in our program, and we have added more functionality to the get and delete endpoints, which are the two endpoints that include an ID variable. I hope this video has been helpful, and I'll look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.